Hello and welcome. We're going to be opening this EVGA XR1 light capture device. This is not an internal capture card, though sometimes people call these capture cards. They connect through USB opposed to like plugging into your PC system. And I've needed one of these for quite a while. This is my old capture device. You can see that it connects through USB. And this thing has been dying for quite a while, but now it just doesn't work at all. When I plug it in, OBS just errors out all over the place. So when I plug in my other capture device and try to launch OBS, it just does a bunch of these. There's nothing really to see here, like none of these options do anything, but it's dead. So yeah, I don't know if I would recommend this device, like this QGEEM device or any knockoffs like it. If you go to you know any online retailer, you'll find tons and tons of, of devices just like these. And that's why this one stood out to me because it's EVGA, which isn't just like a random no-name company. And the box is like really solid. Look, there's OBS right there. On the back, it talks about the video format and I think it talks about the color but it's the specifications and the OBS logo that makes me feel like this actually might do exactly what I need it to so let's go ahead and get it open so in the box we find another box in the box there were two sets of cords this one's probably USB-C so here's your USB-C and then of course the other one is just a standard HDMI. And of course the main event is the XR1 Lite. And you can see just how small this thing is. So here's the old capture device. It's about as long actually, but it's about two wide like that. But my point is that it's actually really small, so it's not gonna take up a bunch of room. On the one side there's HDMI, and on the other side there's another HDMI and the USB-C. So it also feels like surprisingly heavy. This doesn't really weigh anything. I mean, it's like, you know, it's something, but it's not super heavy. This is, this feels good actually. And look, there's the OBS logo. Now let's go ahead and plug it into my OpenSUSE Leap Linux desktop and see how it works. We're gonna check out two different configurations. One is gonna look at an external system and then the other one is going to be a loop back into my own system because I wanna see if there are any performance differences like recording with OBS just on my computer versus plugging it through this. I don't think there will be, but I'm interested and hopefully you are too. So let's check it out. So for the test, I'm gonna use a game called Cluster Truck because it's kind of an older game, but it's 3D and it's demanding enough for my puny little machine. And right now we're looking at this screen through the external device. If I pop out OBS's stats right here, you can see the average time to render frame at two and a half milliseconds. So if I hop over to OBS and switch it to desktop capture, it didn't look like anything changed for you, but now it's rendering through OBS, like through my, my computer instead of the capture device. And the average time has jumped up to nine milliseconds. So switch it back and we drop back down to three. Yeah, it looks like it wants to hover around three milliseconds again. So I don't know if this is gonna show up in the footage or like in the gameplay, maybe it'll be smoother using the external device, but let's find out. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look at the device properties. And let me pull open r and so you can see it shows up as Centurion Technologies. A lot of times these capture cards show up as monitors or even webcams. I think it's cool this is showing up as, I mean, I guess it could still be like a webcam sort of protocol, but whatever Centurion Technologies is. So the actual device name shows up as EVGA XR1 Light Capture Box Video, which isn't what the monitor was named, which is kind of interesting. Input one is camera one, and it's got a bunch of different formats, three of which show up as emulated. I actually don't know a whole lot about these video format things. A few different resolutions to choose from, so if you want to record at 720 for whatever reason, or maybe you're doing like console stuff, I don't know. Change the frame rate and change the color range, which I think is... Actually, it doesn't seem to do anything. It usually makes it darker or lighter, but this doesn't do anything. So we're playing Cluster Truck here, and if you're not familiar with this game, boy, it came out a while ago, maybe 10 years ago or so. 
And the point of the game is to jump across the backs of semi-trucks to reach an arbitrary goal in the level. Or I guess you could call this a course if you wanted to. But you're supposed to do it without touching the ground, the walls, the ceiling, basically anything. So if I play this without trying to record it, or even like with OBS running or anything like that, I get about 60 frames a second. So I've got Mango HUD running at the top left, and you can see it's using OpenGL instead of Vulkan or DXVK. It's an older game, but down to about 30 frames a second from 60. It's a pretty big drop, and this is with the EVGA capture device. All right, so now I'm recording the game window. So this isn't like game capture or Vulcan capture or anything like that, since this is just OpenGL, there's no real way of doing that. I haven't been paying too close of attention to the frame time graph, but any differences between the two capture types will show up there. I mean, it's just like a squiggly line, so there's not really a whole lot to see. I might actually make it this time. This part's hard. I have to land on those trucks down there. Can I do it? Oh, nice. And look, there's the goal. Let's just ride this one out. It's a good place to stop, actually. Now we can compare footage. So looking back at the footage, I didn't really see much of a difference at all in terms of the frame rate. Both capture sources came in at about 30, 35 frames a second, and the actual gameplay didn't feel any different between the two, so it's not like it was adding input delay or anything like that. So now let's switch gears and record an external system. So it says no video here until I turn my Raspberry Pi on, and then we see the Raspberry Pi bootloader, I guess boot sequence. Loading into the system, just like any distro delves you may have seen, and here's the login screen. So funny story, I actually forgot what the root password was for this little Raspberry Pi. I haven't used it in a while. But aside from that time I changed the color range and it froze up the display, which you shouldn't really be doing while you're recording anyway, it's uh, working perfect. For 60 bucks, I can say that I'm pretty darn happy with this thing. Again, I haven't used it a whole lot. Who knows, maybe it'll break next week or something, but probably not. So that's going to wrap this video up. I hope that you liked it. And if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Now that I have another capture device, I can get back to doing distro delvey sort of things. Pretty excited about this, and I hope you are too. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.